This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. Well, over the past week, the drama surrounding the trucker and citizen protest of the draconian policies of Justin Trudeau have now reached a fever pitch. With a vast number of truckers, their families, and just average hardworking citizens joining together, really in organic intersectionality, to protest the insanely restrictive COVID restrictions being imposed by Canada's new self-proclaimed dictator, Justin Trudeau, it now appears that there seems to be at least a consensus with about 40 to 50% of the people that are currently living in Canada. Now, I do want to give Justin some slack as we both have a lot in common, you know, as we are both half Cuban. But as the rest of the world is relaxing their iron-fisted Stalinist grip on alchemically-based COVID restrictions, Justin Trudeau is doubling down. He's refusing to relent claiming that he had the safety and protection of Canadians as his primary concern, which you know is nonsense. And of course, it has nothing to do with actual safety. And if you begin to survey the world and begin to look at which leaders and nations are being the most aggressive and repressive of their citizens, you will find that most of them have one of three things in common. First would be number one, a dedication to the purposes and goals of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Or, number two, a dedication to the purposes and goals of those associated with the Chinese Communist Party. Or, number three, a dedication to win the favor of either the World Economic Forum or the Chinese Communist Party. This is pretty much undeniable. So, Trudeau has some company. He has the company of those that basically said, we're all in this together, more or less like a religious community. So this community of committed religious followers have made the pledge and commitments to follow through as articulated in the Goethe poem from the 18th century. Uh, This was again from the World Economic Forum on commitment, which in part read, quote, until one is committed, there is always hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always in effectiveness, end quote. They are committed. Some more than others, but they are all committed. With some, they have spent 40 or 50 years being committed to this goal of transitioning the world into a top-down, enviro-communist, fascist, totalitarian global technocracy. That eliminates all privacy. That eliminates all personal liberty. That punishes people for having different opinions that punishes people for their ethnicity. And some within this community of religious believers from the World Economic Forum apparently have the iron will to resist the falling apart of the iron COVID curtain. So Justin Trudeau has a committed group of people that he's actually making his decisions with. He is not alone on these things. So when you see him actually in Canada, or if you see him at his retreat as he had very convenient COVID to be able to get away, um, you can imagine that he's probably sitting down and speaking with some of the other true believers that are committed to this utopian dream. First of those would be most likely Jacinda Ardern of New Zealand, the squeaky voiced former Mormon Fabian from New Zealand, and I'm not kidding, by the way, that's true, who was previously a policy advisor to British Fabian Prime Minister Tony Blair in the United Kingdom, who was and is a young leader at the World Economic Forum, and who has been a regular participant at the World Economic Forum under Klaus Schwab. And back many years ago, Ardern was elected president of the International Union of Socialist Youth. I-U-S-Y, at their World Congress in the Dominican Republic for a two-year term until 2010. The role saw her spend time in several countries, including Hungary, Jordan, Israel, Algeria, and China. Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, who admitted that the country will become a two 
frontier society between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated following the new government measures. And after a reporter from the New Zealand Herald asked about the creation of two classes of citizens between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, Ardern said, quote, that is what it is. Yep. End quote. And of course, Ardern has implemented all of the crushing measures that Justin Trudeau has implemented as well, firing and dismissing people for being unvaccinated, pushing those who choose to not take the risk of the vaccine out of work and into poverty, into a separate class of oppressed people. And just like Ardern and Trudeau, you have another man, another prime minister. You have possibly the most committed draconian, the most committed tyrant, a man who helped shape the current situation that we are in after years and years as the head of the European Central Bank, squeezing nations who would not obey the EU rules, who set financial policy along with the IMF, who gave guidance and measurement to the World Economic Forum, who oversaw the EU financial brokering during Brexit, who has been brutally harsh on Italians during COVID. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi, who imposed restrictions on those working in Italy forcing vaccinations. Mario Draghi, who has prohibited the unvaccinated from using public transport and even roads in Italy. Mario Draghi who has prohibited the unvaccinated from shopping for groceries in Italy. Mario Draghi, who just in the last 48 hours has made it mandatory, compulsory in Italy today, with 500,000 unvaccinated citizens over 50 that will be suspended from work and left without salary. Mario Draghi stated in response to his tyrannical edict, quote, The unvaccinated are not part of our society. End quote. Let me repeat that again. Mario Draghi said this, quote, The unvaccinated are not part of our society. Yes, Mario Draghi, who just today declared that anyone who does not have the third shot, the booster shot, is considered unvaccinated and will lose their pass to work, to eat in restaurants, or to shop. You have Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi literally digging in, digging in with no signs of letting up, with his iron-fisted fascist brutality slamming down on his citizens, as if he is some Caligula-era Caesar, or Benito Mussolini, proclaiming any unvaccinated unclean. And then there is the French dictator with so much energy and spirit. Enough energy and spirit for he and his mom. Or is that his wife? Well, anyway, Emmanuel Macron, another young global leader of the World Economic Forum, who has stated in the past that he believes that it is unpatriotic to not be in favor of the European Union as opposed to the sovereignty of France. And Macron said this in December of 2018. Quote, patriotism is the exact opposite of nationalism. Nationalism is treason, end quote. Yes, so you have a French president stating that to believe that France should have sovereignty apart from the European Union is treason. Now, remember, the treason is not against France. The treason is against the European Union. And in Emmanuel Macron's World Economic Forum Guided World, the supranational state, the EU, or being a global citizen, is where your patriotic fervor really needs to be. So once again, you have the now tried and true fertile fallacy of nationalism and sovereignty is bad, supranationalism and globalization is good, and hence you will lose all your rights, and all of your property, and all of your money. If you stand against the transition into the supranational artificial intelligence guided fourth industrial revolution, which is really more like the fourth Reich. But Emmanuel Macron is not budging 
not one inch, even to the extent in which several weeks ago, as I've already stated here on public occurrences, both foreign and domestic, where Macron said that he would like to defecate on those that are unvaccinated, that he plans on making life unreasonably hard for them. That's a French president saying that to his own citizens. Almost like a German leader, maybe 80, 90 years ago or so, that maybe said the same thing to Jewish citizens. And then there is Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. And of course, Australia has been turned into a prison colony of sorts, with quarantine camps, with insane restrictions, with police digitally monitoring the citizens' every move. Yeah, he has a lot in common with Justin Trudeau. He has fellowship with him. They're in this together. And then there is China. China, the Chinese Communist Party, whom Justin Trudeau wishes he could be like. Well, China is being China the digital surveillance state. There is no real volitional freedom in China. You can earn a living and have some freedom of movement and normality as long as you don't complain. Or if you don't buy alcohol. Or if you gripe against or raise a fist to the totalitarian government. Well, you really don't know how bad it could really be. But that's life in China. And Justin is jealous of China. He wishes he could be China. But in the United States, although we were right in lockstep with the rest of the tyrannical governments that are being guided by the World Economic Forum, we have backed off a bit. The CDC is backtracking. Freedom of speech is ruling. And information that conflicts with that, which was previously gospel from the public health authorities, And now all of a sudden, what could have gotten you banned for saying something on social media in regards to public health just, let's say, three, four, five, six months ago is now being proclaimed by public health. Amazing how that happens. But the United States is still being strict with some COVID policies. And the craziness of what is happening in our healthcare system in the banning of unvaccinated doctors and nurses, keeping them from being on the front line. Remember, they were our heroes. They sacrificed it all. But now, oh no, they are the goats. And now you have the dangerous situation of creating entryism in our armed forces due to vaccinations, which will, of course, weed out those that are not going to obey. They're not going to do these crazy things. Well, they're out of the military now. Now, if Canada falls, if Trudeau backs off from his religious commitment to see through the steps necessary for Klaus Schwab's and Xi Jinping's utopian fantasies, then the whole thing crumbles. The United Kingdom and Boris Johnson are backing down. The Netherlands are backing down. Aggressively, previously aggressively blue states with mayors from the young leaders, the World Economic Forum and the Asia Society like Gavin Newsom and Eric Garcetti are backing down. And one can just imagine the late night or early morning Zoom calls with Justin Trudeau, Jacinda Ardern, Emmanuel Macron, Mario Draghi, Scott Morrison, with various Democrats and Republicans from America and Klaus Schwab, maybe Henry Kissinger, maybe Richard Florida, and maybe a bunch of tech gurus and CEOs, and maybe someone from the Biden administration or from the central bank, all telling one another that they have to be strong. They have to hold the line just a little bit longer to ignore the protest, to not enter into negotiations with any of them, to prosecute the protesters viciously if necessary, which means that you have a number of national leaders who have their national policy guided by Herbert Marcuse's repressive tolerance, which in a nutshell means 
that you must be intolerant of anything that represents the previous hegemony, the old world, the world of capitalism and traditional values. You must look at those things as counter-revolutionary, oppressive, racist, and misogynistic. And they must be done away with. And you can only support and tolerate those things that are for the Marxist enviro-fascist revolution, as proclaimed by the World Economic Forum. And that is why Trudeau said he would gladly march again with the Marxist group Black Lives Matter. You see, Trudeau, Macron, Draghi, Ardern, they are tolerant. But don't be confused because the tolerance that they practice is repressive tolerance. So everything that was before the reflexive pandemic must be deconstructed, discriminated against, and destroyed. And if it is lockdown policy that will allow them to destroy you and your old world, you know, the Judeo-Christian capitalist ways of the old world, then so be it. There will be no negotiation. And now you understand that you have neo-Marxist dictators ruling your nations. And they don't care about your laws. They don't care about your old traditions. They don't care about your families. They don't care about your faith. They will stick together. They are committed. Because, as George Orwell stated, quote, All tyrannies rule through fraud and force. But once the fraud is exposed, they must rely exclusively on force. End quote. And they know that they have been shown to be fraudulent. So now they will use brute force. And if one of them is found violating rules of counter-revolution and revolt, the rules of the World Economic Forum and the commitment to see this through, well, that will break all trust with their fellow believers that they are in communion with. That's their tribe. The others, dedicated to the globalist neo-Marxist technocratic dream, which means that we have a much higher hill to climb than many of you thought. The ring of dedicated World Economic Forum leaders are dedicated and are committed, just like the truckers. And you, patriot citizen, are not in the World Economic Forum's religious community. They don't intend on having fellowship with you. They intend on crushing you and your sovereign nations. They plan on disrupting and dismantling everything around you and ushering in the coming utopian age. They are committed to their new religion. The question is, are you committed to the truth? Are you committed to your nation? Are you committed to your family? Are you committed to the Lord? To not be afraid. To stand with courage. To stand down the tyrants. Because if you go home now, if you turn back now, you will most likely not have this opportunity again. You see, you need to know when the time is right. When you are at the fulcrum point in history, and if you can't tell, right now, folks, you have the momentum. You can't surrender momentum, no matter what the cost, because... We must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences Both Foreign and Domestic. (music) 